competitive. And, and they also don't want anybody to get hurt. 12-minute halves, short game. But I'm, the, the guy we haven't mentioned yet is Emmanuel Acott. He reclassified to this year, meaning he was supposed to be in high school this year. He reclassified back to come to Arizona. Have heard so many good things about his game and his versatility. Can play on the ball as a point guard at 6'7". Can play off the ball. Sean Miller thinks eventually he could become that lockdown defender they've had in the past. Like a Rondé Hollis Jefferson or Kadeem Allen last year. He's, he's such a great athlete and so big and strong. He has the tools to be a not a good defender, a great defender. Acott rated as a top 10 small forward in the nation play for Canada and the U-17 World Championships. And he's been all over Sydney's heritage. He grew up in, in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Then he went to prep school at Wasatch Academy in Utah. Now he's playing college ball in Tucson. And oh, by the way, we haven't even mentioned Alonzo Trier yet. Preseason <laughs> All-American. We're talking about these freshmen. Deservedly so. But Alonzo Trier's the guy, the veteran guy. Missed a lot of games last year, but came back. Finished the season great. On, on everyone's preseason All-American teams. Trier, the most outstanding player at the Pac-12 tournament in Las Vegas last year. Throw it up and let's play basketball in Tucson. Now, they won't officially open the season until November 10th against Northern Arizona, but don't tell 12,000 in McHale. Here's Trier with the ball. He was 35. Marcello. Last year, they were 15-1 and one in this building, and they averaged 11,410 people. Well, Sean Miller, again, and I'm going to say this word 100 times tonight, the versatility that he has to play big, to play small, and using different lineups because of everybody's versatility, it's going to be really interesting to watch this team grow. Ayton. Your 7'1", 250-pound guy just knocked down a 17-footer, too. Oh, by the way. John Miller talks about how smart he is and how he knows how to play with four other guys. Because a lot of guys coming out of high school score 30, 35 points. They don't know how to, to play within a system, well, but not this guy. More impressive than that is that he can play inside and out. Usually big guys, freshmen, are just inside guys because that's where they've always played. He has developed perimeter skills. So he's going to step out and shoot. He shot the most three-pointers on his high school team last year. And so he can do it. I don't think Sean Miller wants him spending a ton of time on the perimeter, but it's nice to know that he can do that. Pinder couldn't get the rebound. Here comes the red. He walked the first time up the court. Brandon Randolph. That's Parker Jackson Cartwright who led the team with 127 assists last year. And he can shoot it too. Deserved a better result. There's your put back. You know what I love Tucson. about that play? Ristich. Ristich dunked it. He, he has so much stuff in the paint. And he's always jump hooking, laying it up. He went up and dunked that one, which tells me he may be stronger this year here in his senior year. He may be in better condition. Takes more effort to dunk versus lay it up. But, I mean, look at this lineup. Maybe the, uh, the Americanization of the Serbians game? Go I mean, hard to the rim. Hey, I'm not saying anything other than he has been so effective in the paint for the last couple years that if he starts imposing his will with some toughness, along with all that touch and footwork he has down there, man. Dusan, big score last year. Double figures 25 times. Keanu Pinder going to the basket. Very smooth. Well, here's the thing. You played Ristich last year with Markinen. Markinen was a was a very, very good three-point shooter. So you're saying, okay, we got Markinen outside, Ristich inside. It didn't seem to open up as much as I thought it would. But I think now with Aiton, he can play, start inside, transition outside, and now you got problems checking both of them. Oh, Randolph off the dribble with a teardrop. It danced in and came out. What, what it's going to take with this team is some buy-in and some give. And by that I mean, guys, because you have so many good players, maybe your numbers aren't going to look the way you want. But if everybody buys in and gives in, then you can win a national championship. Don, when I talk to guys about this program, they're a little worried that there are five freshmen. But 
you know, that's an outdated philosophy, right? These guys come in polished no. and ready to play. No, these guys are way too good. It's not about that. And Sean Miller is a, is a great teacher. If you come watch a Sean Miller practice, the attention to detail, the level of intensity. Guys get better throughout the course of the year just by practicing. So, no. Freshmen, there's so many freshmen that are impact freshmen now. These guys are ready. They played, well, let me back up. They're not ready. But they're so seasoned in how much they've played year round for, for year round many for years. years that they're able to pick stuff up and if they're not they won't play. So if you want to play on a team and showcase your skill, because a lot of these guys are just here are here because they have to be for a year. And and, and what they want to do is have a good year to enhance their draft stock, then you'll buy in and you'll learn and you'll get the concepts and you'll learn the offense. Because the end game for them is next spring. Well, and there's great balance because you can talk about the freshmen all night, five, but they have five upperclassmen as well, mm -hmm. four seniors and a junior who are going to balance this thing out. And that's part of the reason why it's the best roster I've ever seen as Barcelo knocks one in. Barcelo, sorry. Yeah, Barcelo mentioned the number two player coming out of this state. Miller loves him because he can shoot the three. That time, put it on the deck and took it to the basket. Well, getting back to that balance, that's what I said about that roster because it's one thing, and teams have, have had monster recruiting classes, and you're saying, wow, these guys are going to be so good. But to me, it's the balance of the, of the freshmen and the experience they have on the roster. Trier misses the three. The Trier really came on at the end of last year. Didn't play a whole lot of games, about 18 games last year. Missed the first 19 for the PED suspension, but came back, and to his credit, it's hard to miss half a year. To his credit, he came back and played really well. Yeah, he was ready when he got back. and Most outstanding player at the Pac-12 tournament as Arizona avenged losses to both Oregon and UCLA. I thought that gave them a lot of traction going into the tournament. Kind of purging the past. Well, last year there was so much adversity with the Trier thing and injuries. Ray Smith went down again before the season started. That I thought it would it would be the year they get to the Final Four just because everyone was was not as high on them getting to the Final Four last year. You know what I mean? Kind of yeah, kind of like the, off, yeah. like the reverse psychology right. thing. Five losses for this team last year, and all five teams made it to the Sweet 16. Sean Miller in Arizona looking to take the next step. You're watching Pac-12. That they can rely on him. The assist to turnover ratio, great. Sh improved three-point shooting last year, great. So I think people want to question whether this is the point guard that can get them to a Final Four. I think it is. It, but again, I go back to the versatility. He doesn't have to be on the ball for 40 minutes. Trier can handle it. Acock can handle it. Randolph can handle it. You have other guys that can bring the ball up the court and initiate the offense. Chase Jeter played at Duke for two years out of Las Vegas. Yeah, he, he started a handful of games down there. Yeah, he has to sit out this year. But we've seen through the years with Sean Miller getting redshirt players, they improve so much the year they're out. You know, there's some guys that don't improve when they, when they have the year that they sit out. Players, when they come to Arizona and have to sit out a year, their body looks better the next year. Their skill sets improve. So they get a lot out of coming here and spending that year just practicing with the team. Strength and conditioning, you're talking about that program because Sean Miller always talks about guys coming in. He says, this guy is a beast. I can't wait to see what happens to him once he's in our strength and conditioning program. Well, look at, look at. He's talking about eight now. He said eight never looked at any weights. And look at that guy. Uh, there's Randolph knocking, knocking one down. I was just going to say, I mean, look out on the court. And look at the body type. I mean, here step back. It goes back to what I was saying earlier with kind of a pro team. I mean, you know, th this is uh, an impressive looking group. Speaking of body types, <laughs> you think Aiden's big? I bet you. I bet you. You stand him next to Shaq, and he looks tiny. Shaq makes everybody. I'm not a small guy, Waddy. But Shaq makes me look small, you like know, seriously. I was the Lakers sideline guy for a while when Shaq was there with Kobe, and I always tell people Shaq's, Shaq's body was like a keg. He, he isn't tall and skinny. He's big. But you don't, unless you see him close up, you don't, I mean, Shaq is a mountain. Yep. 
super impressive in person. Backdoor cut and an easy flush well, for Ira Lee. With this many good players, I said it, I sort of said it earlier. Can there, can there become a culture of unselfishness? Make the right play. I'm not looking for mine. I got to make oh. the right play. Look at Aiden just snap it out of the air. And he puts his arms in the air. Shows off the biceps. Man. Man is the right word. I mean, <laughs> they're just not supposed to look like that. They're freshman year at college. Yeah, all the way the around. Since you were in it? I mean, I was a top 10 kid coming out of high school. And I was six, nine and a half, oh. 200 pounds. Randolph, I don't know how he kept his feet and didn't walk. Worked his way inside and scores. I want to see him deal the ball. That'll be a foul. Parker Jackson Cartwright. He's got a good handle, doesn't it? Looked like he had it on a string. Led the conference and assist to turnover ratio last year. Jeter, left shoulder jump hook, no. But look at him just snatch that rebound. And then come up on the other side. Snatched it. And then that's the pass I was talking about. PJC probably could have flipped that in himself. But why not make the extra pass and give Lee a dunk? You know, we're not paying much attention to the score. You think these guys have a little bragging rights going on? Probably. Yeah. Probably. You know, the one thing I'm excited about for this Arizona team this year, and they improved it a little bit last year, is that perimeter shooting. I've always felt like that's that's hurt them to a certain degree. Here's why. It, it allows teams to play different defenses against them. If you have knockdown shooters, you can't really zone them. You can, but you're, you're, you're rolling the dice. And I think now with this group, with Barcelo, PJC, Randolph, Trier, you have guys on the perimeter that can knock shots down. So what does that do? It draws defenders out, opens up the paint for Ristich and Aiden. And that's why I say they have, I'm trying to think, and I was thinking this before I got here tonight, they have all the boxes checked. What, what would be their weakness now that I'm watching them in person? I'm not sure what this team's weakness is. Defensively, you're confident that answer? Maybe, maybe the understanding of defense early because you got so many freshman contributors. That's a that could be that could be a valid point. Like right now, maybe they're not great defensively, but we know Sean Miller's not going to put up with guys not guarding. So I think by you know December January, I think you can check that box too. Brandon Randolph has the red in front. 14-12, he's got nine points to lead all scores. There's Trier, haven't seen him get going yet tonight. Smith, a jab step. Ristich stepped out on him. Jeter inside the jump hook, and he threw that down. You know, Jeter was a was a top 10 high school player. Went to Duke. We, we know how Duke recruits, and so didn't really get a lot of time his first two years and decided it, it was time to move on. But he will be a valuable piece for Arizona next year. And Jeter grew up in Vegas. His dad was part of that, that UNLV national title team. Oh. Early 90. Trier was going to turn that over on him. Jeter pretty polished in the paint. And I'm sure he's gotten even more polished the last couple of years at Duke. Don, you've been doing this a long time, since, what, 2004. You've been to a, a ton of practices. Most of them are, are kind of sleepy affairs, a lot of chatting, a lot of scheming. I'd like to see these guys practice. Oh. There's a lot of talent on this court. Sean Miller runs a very good practice, and if, and if the team isn't up and into the practice, he will manufacture that, if you know what I mean. I do. Um, High-level, high-intensity practices get a lot out of it. Well, what a coach has always said, there's only so many hours a week that we can be with these kids, and once you get into se into season, well, then it's really limited, so you can't mm -hmm. waste any time. Can't waste time, and what what's changed, and you see it, and it's talked about a lot in the NBA, is teams not going as hard or as long that rest has become way more important, especially once you get into the conference season. That was Acott who got blocked inside and taken away. Parker Jackson Cartwright. I'm telling you, PJC, he's, he's going to have a good year this year. I, I just know it. Led the team in assists 18 times. One of the best three-point shooters in the conference. Great kid, too. Great kid. And he led U of A in steals 12 times. You've seen him with two picks already tonight. 
16-16, 350 to play. Now he's got three names and he's big enough to carry them. Parker Jackson Cartwright, all the assists last year, but this kid can score as well. Prince win. Can they knock Chosen Rosen and the Bruins off their game? Oregon and UCLA. Earlier tonight inside McHale, the adaptive athletes from the Disability Resource Center here, sponsored by the U of A. It is the only program in the Pac-12. They sponsor six different sports. The head coach is Derek Brown. They have 18 guys. Went to the Nationals last year in Kentucky, finished seventh or ranked number five. And they're going to start their season tomorrow against the Phoenix Suns down the road. Those guys play hard. 33 Paralympians have come out of that program. I was really impressed, as I am every year, by how hard those guys play. I got to do the Paralympics a couple times, and, and I had a chance to try it. It's brutal, and it's physical. Good yeah, stuff. No, they, they, they knock early. each other around. <laughs> it's impressive to watch. Jim Watson, Tom McLean at the McHale Center. It's the annual Red Blue game, and this is a serious affair. A sellout crowd of 12,000, and five of the best freshmen in the country, along with five great upperclassmen. We've seen some pretty good stuff already, including a dunk contest to get the night started. The zone from the red team right now. First time we've seen that. Have to adjust and get the shot off of the shot clock running down. That was Dylan Smith. It was the only option he had. This is Parker Jackson Cartwright. Blue now in the same Aincott. defense. Acott from outside. Look at Smith get up. It seems like every rebound, Don, is being won above the rim. Well, if you don't get it above the rim, you ain't getting it. Down a bigger from the baseline. And see, to me, he's... He is a change of pace with this team. There's so many big, quick, big leapers, and this guy kind of plays between the raindrops. Well, I don't know how much stock Sean Miller and his staff are going to put into this game film, but I'm sure guys are playing for minutes right now, and if, and if you're not performing and you're not executing the game plan, then you're not going to earn more minutes. That's a good point. For a lot of these guys, it's a good time. It's your debut, have a little fun, but there are guys out here yeah. looking at this as an opportunity. Well, because this is your first time in front of fans, you're on TV, how are you going to react to it? You know, you play in a couple weeks. So, but again, it goes back to how much depth they have. I mean, you can't play 12 guys. I mean, I guess you could, but playing waves. most most people don't. Acott taking on Cheater at the rim. You've already seen Cheater with a couple blocks tonight. That time they get called for the foul. Jeter goes 6-10, Acott 6-7. Of course, Jeter, the junior, taking on the freshman, saying, not yet, not yet, rookie, still my house. Well, one thing Acott will learn is you go to the body. He got the foul there because Jeter hit him on the arm. But when he, when he understands that when you drive baseline, you go chest to chest to that big guy, make him come off of his verticality, and foul you, then you try and flip it up and try and get an and one. They got one out of two. Aiton with the rebound. DeAndre Aiton, the number one prospect in the country last year. Lonzo Trier. Dylan Smith gaps the defense, pulls up nice. from 12. Rebound, Dusan Ristich. Every guard's got to have that little two foot floater. Nice pick. Trier took it away, and he's going to the basket. <laughs> you see that? There's no way that Ristich was going to let Aiton dunk on him, and Trier was going <laughs> to throw it up if he had committed to him. Trier knew it, took it himself, and threw it down. Waited for the defense to decide. Three-pointer. I don't know if we've seen a three in the game so far. Not successful. Alex Barcello. There's been one three-pointer in the contest so far. Smith from the baseline. Might have been blocked. Maybe a little slap on the wrist. Talbot Denny is into the game. He missed all last year with an injury. Uh, no doubt Trier's got the athleticism, but see, Ristich isn't going to challenge him. Too late. The last thing you want to do in your first appearance of the season is have 12,000 people see you uh, get dunked on.
Trier for three, short. Aiden with the rebound back to Barcelo. Got it on the string. Smith is always looking to shoot from the elbow. Kick yeah, that he, short 17. He has that mentality. He's getting him up here in this first half for sure. He's got his chin up. Man after my own uh, heart. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can shoot him. You just better make him. This dish. Pass. The no look bounce pass inside. As he finds Ira Lee waiting on the block. I forget coming up at halftime. Chris Francis on the desk in San Francisco. Women's volleyball highlights. A couple of top 20 teams, CCLA and Utah, going at it. Rich Rod, the University of Arizona football team here in Tucson. And they'll give you a preview of the games coming up on Saturday. All with Chris Francis at the break. I forgot to look. Where is Arizona this week? I didn't look at it either. I was looking at basketball all week. Here at Cal. Here at Cal. Cal with a big win over Washington State. Surprised a lot of Smashed people. Smashed him. Yeah. 20 seconds to go in the first half. Tied at 22. Three second differential. Let's see how they run it. This is stuff that Sean Miller used. You know, time and score stuff. Late game or late clock execution. Yep, situational. There's Smith. Three on the shot clock and he was on his knees and got fouled. Uh, They're going to get, uh, yeah, Jackson Cartwright. This guy who knocked him down. They'll give it to him. So it's going to send Smith to the line with 6.4. It's the last thing you wanted to do if you were the red team is put him on the line. But now you have 6.4 to do something. Dylan Smith, the redshirt sophomore from Mobile, Alabama. Transfer from UNC Asheville where he was a Big South all-freshman selection. Again, I go back to what I said earlier, Waddy, in the program all year, practicing with the team, and it shows. He looks like he's ready to go. Is he going to be a rotation player, Dylan Smith? Yeah, minutes are going to be hard to come by. You're going to have to produce when you get a chance to play. Three seconds. Putting it up. That's off the mark and off the glass. And the first half ends with a one-point advantage for the Blues. Sean Miller is happy with what he's seen so far, and of course, Everybody's healthy. Remember, he's not really coaching tonight. Romar has the blue and Mark Phelps has the red. It's the annual red-blue game in front of another sellout crowd at McHale. On the other side of break, we send you San Francisco, Chris Francis, and the Halftime Report. McLean loves scores. The all-time scorer in the Pac-12 Conference, 2,608 points. How many assists? A lot. A lot less than that. <laughs> You were carrying those teams. Just underway, second half, and no one's left. 12,000, another sellout. They always sell out, Mikhail. Taken away uh -oh. by Barcelo to Aiton. I mean, I don't know if we can get a shot of it from our producer, Jay Cutlow, but Aiton from, from the time of the steal getting down to the other rim, my goodness. Three seconds, three steps. For 7 one two fifty. that is a joke. Aycott, drive and dish. Drive the defense, somebody's open. I mean, that, again, I, I I know I'm repeating myself, but the physical tools that Aiton has, it's, it's shocking to watch live. And I cover NBA game. You know, I, <laughs> I feel silly even asking, but he's going to hold up under a 35-game season? Aiton? Yeah. I mean, he's going to dominate. Still a teenager. There, there's nothing that tells me he's 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 not going to dominate. He may not get 20 a night just because they have so many good players, but his presence is going to dominate. You know, it's funny you bring that up, Don, because last year they go 32 and five, and the only guy who would score a lot of points was Markin. And I was I was amazed as I went back through the box scores Watch and this. saw the balance. Watch this. Where's Aiton? Look, beats everyone down the floor. For a guy his size, you just don't see that. You just don't see guys go end-to-end -end that fast. Last year, Markinen was the only guy for Arizona in the top 20 in both points and rebounds. Is that a Sean Miller by byproduct, balance? No, I mean, I, I think they're going to have more balance this year. Last year, Markinen had those numbers because Trier was out for half the That's year. Right. And in the, at the end of the season, it was more Trier than Markinen going into the Pac-12 tournament and then into the NCAA tournament. 
But looking at this team, you have so many good players and so much depth and so much versatility. I don't think it's going to be Trier most nights. I think it's going to be Aiton one night, maybe even Ristich one night. Trier, I think, at the end of the day, leads him in scoring. But Well, Trier led him in scoring last year. Increased his scoring from his freshman season to his sophomore year. But I think the biggest improvement thing everybody talked about is how much cleaner he played. He used to have more turnovers than assists, and he flipped that last year. Mm -hmm. Decision-making much better. And that's normal in the progression of a college basketball player. You know, There's the three you were talking about. Aiton will shoot him. The more you play... The more experience you get, the better your decision-making is. Sure, you anticipate things. You see the game, it slows down. Shiano Pinder, we talked about him in the first half as maybe being the sleeper coming out of this game. I just wonder, though, if, he, if he's going to play in front of some of these other guys. I mean, he's just not as athletic as them, even though that was an athletic play. So much competition for minutes. Randolph, step back with a guy in his face. With Smith. Here comes Trier, head up as he See, crosses the timeline. This, this is what I like. Trier can lead the break, can get him into the offense, can make plays with the dribble, and score. Pinder missed with the left, and then a foul in the backcourt. You know, PJC doesn't have to bring it up. Barcelo doesn't have to bring it up. Barcelo, I would like, you know, envision this. Trier brings it up. PJC's out of the game. Barcelo on the trail or the space three. Trier finds him because he can really shoot. That's the versatility I'm talking about. Doing different things. Guys bringing it, different guys bringing it up. Allows you to do different things on the offensive end. Ristich does the screens here if you want it. A high hedge and he rolls. Oh, by the way, Acock can handle it yeah, too. Yeah, sure can. Heart of the basket with the left hand. I think they'll get Pinder again. You know, I just, you know what I just thought about? Acott should be in high school this year. That guy right there. <laughs> That's a high school senior right there. It's not what I looked like as a high school no. senior. Told you before, comes out of Winnipeg. You know what's different these days, and we mentioned earlier back when I played and through, through the years, what's different is, is these guys understand how hard you have to work now. If you want to be a high-level guy, if you want to be a McDonald's All-American and go where you want for college and then be a one and done they understand it's not just about what what god-given ability you have you have to develop skills you have to work on your body nutrition all that stuff and that's why you see these guys come in that's looking right. the way they do yeah and they're thinking about it at a much younger age and, yes and all those things you just talked about that's all part of Miller's program. I know a lot of coaches do it, but Miller talks about strength and conditioning and showing up polish and developing extra skills once you've arrived on campus. Aiden inside. He's got good feet. I mean, he'll move side to side pretty well. And he gets off the floor quickly. Look at his shoulders. Big He's got hands. a back like a kite. Big Small hands waist, big too. shoulders. I mean, who's stopping that guy in college? Miller said he never lifted weights. He does now. Put yeah. on about 30 pounds. Oh, he's into the strength and conditioning program big time. He's got 12 points. He can match his jersey number right here. Didn't get the free throw. He's a great passer. He involves the other guys on the floor. Jeter looking to, to dish. Spins baseline. Pump fake over Lee. You don't understand how strong NBA guys are. Hopefully college guys, especially high-level ones like Aiton, the stronger you can get in that one year of college, the better off you are because NBA guys and Olonzo Ball found out last sure night did. how strong NBA guys are. Yeah, he was getting bodied all over the floor. Mm -hmm. Turns out turns out summer league's not that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah, run, running up and down the floor, playing, scoring on points. Playing against guys are, that are going to be playing in Poland this year. <laughs> <laughs> Just over eight minutes to play in the second half. Blew up by 10 now. Yeah, the Reds only scored two points in the second half. The game's gotten a little bit of choppy. Yep. A little more free-flowing in the first half. And yeah, they're letting him play. Mark Phelps coaching the Red. Lorenzo Romar coaching the Blue. And the Blue is on a 9-0 run right now. Coming into the game, Tyler Trillo. Redshirt junior from Connecticut. He came to U of A as a walk-on. 
played at a D3 school called Roger Williams University. It's in Bristol, Rhode Island. That's a big jump from D3 to the U of A. I'll say. Acott. No, that was off all the way. In fact, he never squared up to the basket. Here's the lob. Jeter wanted it at midcourt. He put his fingers in the air. Put it right here. Coming back in transition. It's Acott swatted by Jeter, who's always uh -oh, looking to block. There we go. There you go. Give it back. Aiton. <laughs> Saw that coming. Loved that Trier gave it up. He could have dunked it himself, but he knew that would ignite the crowd. Now you ask any coach at any level, at any program, and they'll tell you offense starts with defense. Trier leaving it for DeAndre Ayton. Arizona wins the Pac-12 Tournament Championship. This is a dream come true. Pac-12 tournament last year was a blast because Oregon, UCLA, and Arizona were just beating each other up during the regular season. Arizona and UCLA split, each winning on each other's home court, and Oregon gave Arizona its worst loss of the year. How about UCLA going 15-3 and three and can't win the conference? That's how good those three teams were last year. And Finished third. That's why I think, you know, everyone was a little disappointed with the outcome of the NCAA tournament except for Oregon because I thought that Arizona and UCLA both had a chance to make deeper runs than they did just based on how well they were playing at the end of the year. Right, Oregon ends up in the Final Four. You know, there's some good teams in this conference. SC is picked second. In the preseason poll, that's their highest pick ever. They got five starters back from a 26-win team. They have everyone back. And and UCLA, a couple double-digit guys. They're adding two McDonald's All-Americans. Oregon, we mentioned, Final Four team. Stanford, four starters. They got the score, Travis Reed. Everyone back for them, too. And that matters in college basketball. Experience really matters. I think Stanford's going to get to the NCAA tournament this year. They have a challenging non-conference schedule. And some would say, oh, well, you know, that's a problem. I, I say it's an opportunity. You knock off some of those high, those ranked teams, that's going to improve your resume so that once you get into the conference schedule, you got a little bit of margin for error. So hopefully Stanford gets off to a good start in November, December. That will really enhance their chances of getting to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, Don, it used to be, you know, 20 wins. Get to 20 wins, you get in the tournament. Nope. That's long gone. But is it now strength of schedule over total wins? Do they, they care if you're beaten up? On it's, cupcakes it's, and get 26. It's, it's road wins. It's it's wins versus top 50. It's 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 all the numbers. Sean, yeah. are we going to schedule Archie at Dayton? Play that game. Well, Ar Archie's at Indiana now. Oh yeah, that's right. So he may schedule that game. Yeah, that would be a good one for that. Arizona, Indiana, would be great. Skip pass. A pull up by Smith, who's looked pretty good tonight. He He's has. got that mid-range jumper down. I think when teams try and zone Arizona, you may see Dylan Smith. Seven points for Smith. Maybe be that zone buster. Ristich spun Tough into shot. some traffic and a fade by Brandon Randolph. Hung in the air a long time. Oh, they call him an exceptional shooter, and that's why. I really like him as, as, as you project to the next level. If he turns into a quality defender, I think he's already got the offense going. Aiton turn and face. You know, he's showing a lot of different wrinkles to his game. I, you know, you look at Aiton, you think he's going to go down on the block and just turn and power guys. I mean, that was that was pretty basketball there. Stepping back. Really polished already. He is. DeAndre Aiton. Sean why... Miller, if you missed at the top, says he's a once-in-a-generation player. Well, that's why you just gush about him. I mean, what what's wrong with his game? I mean, he, he 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 protects the rim. He rebounds inside because he's supposed to because of his size. But then the bonus is he runs. He steps out and shoots threes. So Ristich is at the line here, and this is a guy who had carved out his spot on this roster. How does his role change this year with all these new guys coming in? I don't think it does. I mean, he's their low post presence. Um, that you can throw it into him. He can get you a bucket if the defense comes with a secondary guy. He throws it out, but I don't think he changes as much. The question is, does he play less because Sean Miller wants to play smaller and maybe and maybe use their athleticism, start Aiton at the five instead of Ristich, you know, and, and, and use your athleticism to overwhelm teams. 
I think that's the only difference. I don't think they're going to use Ristich any differently. They just may not use him as much because of how much more talent they have on the roster this year. Ristich was the best shooter on paper last year, 56% from the field. Acott, because they're all like that. To Deuce on Ristich, they're not booing, they're no, doing. No offense to the Deucer, but it's not hard <laughs> to shoot 56% when they're all like that. From three feet? Those are tap ins. Smith, good look down to the block. Pinder would have gone against Ristich, but he got fouled on the entry. Here it is. But he's a smart player. Look at this. Doesn't bring it down, stays up, and puts it in. He's very, very good around the basket with both hands. His footwork is really good for a guy his size. He's going to be a factor Team for Arizona. Team's best shooter last year, second in rebounds, third in points. You see this is a team that every night there could be a different guy leading them in scoring, like him, Trier? I mean, I, I don't know about every night. I think a lot of nights it'll be Trier. But here's the thing. Teams may say, you know what, we're not going to let Trier get 20 so tonight. So take him away. So take him out. But that's the beauty of having versatility in a talent level so high is you have other guys that can go ahead and get you 20 then. Yep, not relying on one guy to go get him. This is the guy that's really impressed me tonight, Parker Jackson Cartwright, because he's so quick, and he attacks you with the basketball in his hand. Conf off. Confidence was a big issue for PJC early in his career here, and I thought last year his confidence rose. And I wouldn't be surprised. It's hard to tell in a game like this, but if his confidence hasn't grown even more. He knows what's on the line. He knows how good this roster is. He knows he's a starting point guard. And so play with confidence, run the team. He had 11 assists in two different games last year. Mm -hmm. that's, that's creating a lot. Finding guys for 11 buckets. Just over four minutes left in the annual red-blue game. Arizona has a couple of exhibitions. Next one will be against Eastern New Mexico on November 1st, and then their first real game is November 10th against Northern Arizona. Lumberjacks. Ristich, there's that high screen. Parker Jackson Cartwright kicks it back. Serb missed it, goes through the hands of Smith. So the Reds gonna keep it down eight. Arizona's gonna play in the Battle for Atlantis tournament as well, Paradise Island in the Bahamas. What a coinky yeah, game. Where's Aiden yeah, from? You think they'll come out and watch DeAndre play? <laughs> oh, he's going to have his own section. That's awesome, though. That, that's always a pretty good tournament. They got North Carolina yeah, State, is. Northern Iowa, SMU is in that tournament this year. You know what the other thing, and in, in, in as many superlatives as we've given Aiden tonight, the one thing that every coach... There he is again. ...is that... He's for sure a one and done. And a lot of one and duns are here for six months. You know, they kind of, they play and whatever. They said he's coachable. He works hard. He's intense in practice. He's, he's looking at this year to get better, which isn't unique, but for a, 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 a for sure top three pick in the draft, it's a little unusual. Trayer with a bunny hop, changed hands in the air, finished with the left. Alonzo Trier, all-conference second team last year, and the most outstanding player at the Pac-12 tournament. Going to be good. They're always fun to watch. I mean, they have serious, serious guard depth. Everyone back, boat right, space in the floor. Metu, the most improved player in the league last year, came back. Shemezi Metu, sure. Here's Trier, he's got nine points. Aiton leads everybody now with 18 in this game, and he's still in there. Mm. He drew the defense away, so Trier's going to benefit from his presence on plays like that. Well, definitely, and I think Trier's been a little bit passive tonight, just letting everybody get, get a chance here, but you see when he wants to what he can do. Aiton stalking that one, knocked away. Smith is flipping out in front to Trier. Now he's got 13, just that fast. And he's tired. Still early in the year. I release, stepped over the line. 
Here's Trier right down the middle. I, I'm sure that part of the game tape will be shown tomorrow. No rotation over. Nobody straight lines from the top of the key and dunks it on a Sean Miller defense, that's for sure. Blue's got a little run going on right now. Uh, the fresh, run. That's the one thing freshmen typically struggle with is they can guard the ball, but team defense, Rotation. rotations. And two times in a row, Trier's gone right down the middle and scored. At least this time Lee was there, but probably a, not a good enough challenge. That being said, it's the red-blue scrimmage, so you're not going to attack the guy and knock him down when he's your own teammate either. Brandon Randolph going to the free throw line, taking his time to get there. He might have got hit in the stomach. He's trying to catch his air. He's got 15. Sean Miller's team's always very good foul shooting teams. It's important. I always make the analogy that free throws are like putts. At the end of your round, go back and look at how many putts you had. Usually uh, they, dictates your score. They spend a lot of time on it, and that's why every year they're either leading or near the lead in the Pac-12 in free throw percentage. Last year, as Don just told you, 77% and first in the Pac-12. Which is 77 per... I mean, this guy's a joke. 8 and 21 points as he bangs the triple. Just so... It, just so the fans know that are watching, 77% for a college team is really, really good. Ristich trying to match him. Trier's fouled by Dusan. 137 left. I mean, how far out is this? Let's well, see. It's, it's not how far out it is, not but it's bad. like all the stuff that we've seen tonight, and then he's going to cap it off with a catch and shoot three. Yeah, he's done. Jeez. And he's celebrating. So as advertised. Yeah. It's going to be it may, fun to watch. Maybe, maybe he was undersold. <laughs> in, <laughs> yes, in my a book, in, a generation in my book, this guy's gotten more hype than anybody to come in the league, and I don't think it's been enough hype now after watching him tonight. First number one recruit to sign with the Pac-12 team since 2007, and he landed in a soft spot. U of A going to be very good this year. You call him top five for sure. Some polls Arizona? Him number one. Oh, for sure top yeah. five. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 may, I may, after watching this tonight and seeing all this talent, I may, I may go to top three. Top three. Yeah. You know, everyone's got their own opinion, but those preseason publications come out before you see anybody. Sure. And they got to sell magazines. Right. A minute left to play. Blues up by 18. Knocked away from Parker Jackson Cartwright. Gets it back. It's over the back on Lee. Easy call. The last thing we need is either team to get the bonus right now. Yeah. And, you know, so <laughs> far it's been a perfect night for Sean Miller. Big crowd. He got to address him. He gave him a standing ovation. So the support has not eroded the least in Tucson. Remember, this is a city that draws a lot of its civic pride from this university, from this yeah. athletic program, and in particular from this basketball team, which this year is going to be great. Leaving it for Jeter. Steps to the basket. Nice pass by Smith. Well, they, they should be excited about this team. This talent level is off the charts. Again, it's the best roster I've seen since I've been doing this broadcasting thing for the last 13 years. And let's just see if it translates. You know, we start in three weeks. But it, it, this is an impressive group of players for sure. Knocked away with 24 seconds left. A 20-point lead for the Blue. Arizona, a near unanimous choice to win the Pac-12. USC is picked second. That's the highest ever preseason pick. We got five starters back from the 26-win team. UCLA. Is picked third. Oregon, who went to the Final Four last year, is picked fourth. And throw it down with the left hand, Ira Lee. <laughs> I was from three feet away from the basket. Final seconds. Maybe time for one more highlight. Trier looks over at Sean Miller and says, do you want me to play or do you want me to take the air out of it? He said, we've got 12,000 people. Let's play. Falling back. Denny at the buzzer. Short. They missed the last shot, but the last highlight, Ira Lee. 
Watch him with the left hand. And fence off Jeter with the right. And a little attitude as well. Well, this team's going to have a lot of attitude. And they're going to pile up a lot of wins. Now they got to go win the conference. And for Sean Miller and the Wildcats, well, they got to get beyond the Sweet 16. That's been the roadblock for them. He's been there seven times as a coach, twice with Xavier, five times in eight years here in Tucson. Six NCAAs in his eight years. And remember, it took him a couple of years to get all of his guys on campus. Aiden leads everybody with 21 points. And as Don just told you, well, maybe undersold coming in as the best recruit in the country. He is fantastic. Brandon Randolph, 16 points. And Lonzo Trier, we already knew he could play in. It looked like he was playing at about three-quarter speed tonight. 15 points. Let's go over to Don McClain. This was Sean Miller. All right, with Sean Miller. Sean, every year I come here, every year it's sold out. How good does it feel to get back in front of these fans? Feels great. You know, it's been a, um, a long off season. We started in Barcelona, Don, and I think all of us are excited to uh, tip it off and begin this 2017-18 uh, season. This isn't really a question, but more of an observation. I mean, Sean, the talent level is off the chart. Like, I had high expectations coming in here, but was blown away by how much talent you have this year. I think we do have some good players, and you know, and to me, DeAndre is unlike anyone that I've seen just because physically he's so gifted on top of being a very good basketball player. But it'll all come down to us being healthy. You know, hopefully, Raleigh uh, can make a full recovery and join us at some point in December. And then it comes down to not everybody gets to shoot, not everybody gets to play, and I'm sure that'll work itself out over time. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. You know, three weeks till the regular season starts, how hard is it going to be? to figure out who plays. Well, our practices have been good, and that's the reason, because um, when you have competition, there's a lot at stake every day, and, and in a lot of ways, I think that'll prepare us, hopefully, for a good beginning. Last question. I think I know the answer to this one, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. What's, the, what's of most importance the next three weeks before the regular season starts? You know, I think most, mostly it's to continue to develop our defense. You know, early in the year, you know, sometimes you're playing catch up because teams are so young. And that's the one thing about our team. We have a lot of new faces. But I think if you watch us three weeks from now, I hope you would observe that we're a much more cohesive, better defensive team. All right, Sean. Thanks. Thanks, Don. Coaches always talk about defense. Sean Miller averaging 28 wins a year at the University of Arizona four times. He's led them to 30 win seasons, including last year at 32 and 5. That's going to do it for us, for your producer, Jay Cutlow, Scott Garofo, your director, my partner, Don McLean, our statistician, Adam Gonzalez. I'm Jim Watson saying so long from Tucson. You've been watching the Red Blue Game on the Pac-12 Network. The season opens November 10th against the University of Northern Arizona. We now join this program already in progress. It goes about 25 yards and they recovered for touchdown. I think we got beat 13 to 12. You know, emotion, enthusiasm is going through my body each time I play in front of the home crowd and against ASU. So it was pretty much.